Today we're going to be visiting the beautiful Mumbles Head in Gower. This is the view that I have every time I'm driving to my art class. So what I want you to imagine is that you're looking at this view through a camera in black and white. And actually, if you imagine yourself looking at anything in black and white, it will be then that you'll see the tonal values rather than the colour. And this is the painting that you're going to end up with and you can see that this is the lighter areas you've got the middle tones here and the darkest tones here so we're just looking at sort of three layers of color but with using one color and today I'm going to be using Winsor & Newton uh, Payne's gray and you're going to be using a the biggest brush that you've got. So I'm using a De La Rowney Aquafine, that's number 18. Or in fact, you can use a Chinese brush because that holds a lot of water. Have everything ready. So you want tissue, wax, um, water. Then when you're actually drawing it out here, I want you to really look, at, first of all, put the horizon down, so at two thirds down. Uh, you've got four trunks here. So I've been a Bit, a little bit naughty and I've taken this sort of trunk more outside so we're focusing so you've got a little touch of it here but you're focusing on these three trunks and I've also instead of making this very very straight I've actually put it in a teeny tiny bit at an angle just so that it comes in so because if you have a straight line going from the bottom straight up it actually leads your eye out of the painting and you want it to come into the painting you want to use these trunks to frame the focal point which is the mumble's head here okay and also yes I did move the people from here to here but that's for later on so when you're drawing this out, now knowing that this is going to be at a slight angle and you're taking this out, I really want you to focus on the negative spaces here. Negative spaces are those spaces around the objects, okay? So, um, and you can see that if you draw this as a negative space only, then if that's wrong, this trunk will be wrong, okay? So you're using everything to your advantage to actually draw things out. And you can see here that try and bring it up you can see the the spacing in between here with the branches as well and as i said the horizon is two thirds down and what you then want to do is get your water and we're just going to put a very very light wash on but you also got to remember that actually watercolor dries 50% lighter doesn't matter how you put the water on because you can't see it at the moment so make sure this is all evenly wet was I the size paper that I am using is A4 I wouldn't go you can actually do this on an A5 as well you can do it half especially if you're a beginner um, the smaller probably start with a smaller painting than a bigger one and also the bigger the paper the bigger the brush should be so make sure that you've got the right equipment because you've got a small brush and a big piece of paper is going to dry very very quickly should have this up to an angle this is straight at the moment because uh for videoing purposes then you start at the top and in, in diagonal strokes slightly overlapping as it goes down You can go down like that. Don't worry if you get a little bit of a gradation. It is the sky, after all. And then you want to just, if you want to add some clouds, you can just leave it like that. Or if you want to add a few streaky clouds, just load your brush up again with a sort of a darker 
slightly, slightly stronger clouds, um, slightly stronger wash. And you can streak across like that. And I would kind of go in a diagonal. And what I wouldn't do is I always tell my students, do not fiddle. Let the watercolour do its own work. And then, so I would just personally, if you can, let it dry naturally. Or you can move the brush, the board around as well. If you move it down and up. Do you see that? And it's starting to disperse as well, which is, so you've got a lovely, beautiful wash as well. We're going to let that dry. And then I'm going to take some, a little bit, just to prepare you for the next session. So I'm going to get, uh, let that dry, go and get my wax. And we're going to try a little bit of dry brush, a little bit of wax on here. And then slowly build up the colours. So we've put in the lightest wash. This is now completely dry. You can see how much that has uh, faded and dispersed into the wash. So please don't freak out if this looks darker than you would expect. Because as I said, it does, as you can see, one, it's really softened and it has dried 50% lighter. So then now we're going to just do the uh, paint in the headland with medium tones. Don't forget that when you paint in, and I'm using a Chinese brush, if you're going to go out, uh, basically, this is the brush that I would choose to take with me anywhere because you've got it holds a lot of water so you can use it for washes, but it also has got this amazing point so you can also use it for detail as well so you want a medium tone here there's a little bridge cross here and you can just put that so you can just, don't worry about it if you go across these trees like that. Oh, don't forget the lifeboat hut. About that. Okay. And, oh, this a little bit across here as well. If you ever have a um, headland here, really good, and you don't want that hard line, all you have to do is dampen your brush and just gently graze along the bottom of it and it'll soften just a touch so you don't have any hard lines. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your wax, so you've got this reflection here and sort of quite a lot of texture so it's going to be fun to actually try with the wax brush now as I said to you previously when I was looking at different things you don't want to do this too much and don't go over the do not go over the trunks if you go over the trunks with the wax you're going to get a streak across it that you cannot uh, you cannot take out, okay? So, different pressures. As I would say, definitely try this uh, on a spare piece of paper. And I'm using not paper, not watercolour, three types of watercolour paper. Smooth, very smooth. Not, which most people use, which has got a slight bump to it. And rough, which gets a loss, um, has a sort of, will give you a lot of texture. Um, so I'm going to use now dry brush here. So you want to actually to either take a synthetic brush as I showed previously or this, but this is partly synthetic actually. So this is fine to use as long as you take enough water 
off it. And so you're going to load this up with paint. And then you're going to take off the excess. And then you're going to start at the bottom. You don't worry about going across the trees. And can you see that going across? I mean, it's really getting a nice shriek, um, shrieky, a uh, streaky. I would leave below that quite light and less is more. So I'm just leaving it like that. I quite like that. So really that's part uh, dry brush and part wax. And then I think that's wet make them um, dry make sure that this is all dry and then we're going to come back and just put in the trunks which is the darkest part of the picture but make sure you've got uh some tissue as well and plenty of watercolor paper uh, plenty of watercolor paint So we've put in the light tones and the medium tones. Now we're going to be looking at the darker tones. The important thing is to remember that when you take a um, photograph, it will always darken the darker tones and lighten the lighter tones. It doesn't get, if you were actually standing here in front of this view, you would see a lot more of this trunk a lot more and you would see a lot more detail as well now I'm not suggesting that you uh, put in all the detail but a trunk is round in shape and when light hits that it's actually going to it should you should see some light hitting on the side of the trunk so I'm going to load up my brush and then I'm going to use this just very steadily just to go up you can use different pressures you can wiggle a little bit because trunks aren't all this different aren't exactly straight are they and then gets a little bit of wiggling here and then while it's still wet You can load up again with even darker colour and you can put, drop a little bit in the side. Do you see that? And then you're going to do exactly the same here. You can do different. A little bit of wiggling, a little bit of different pressures here as well. And then if you want to, you can just put in a little touches. You can just drop in. Can you see that? Some darker tones. And then we're going to do the slightly leaning trunk here. And what you're going to do is you're going to put, now I put darker shadow on one, this on the right side, and you're going to put darker shadow on the left side because you've got the light as if the light is coming through. And then, if you want, you can soften that again. And then you can use now, this was a something I learned by accident. If you can use your, uh, your tissue and slightly put that on the side 
you can get a very nice dappled effect. Just bring that forward. So I'm going to just do this where you can just see that more closely. Stop shaking. Can you see that? Just taking it on the side, just taking off a little bit. And it's not even. You mustn't make it even because nature is not even. And you can just put. And it doesn't have to be too much. And on the, the on this one, you want the light coming on the right side. So. And I've just scrumpled up the paper. You can just see that. It's not anything. Be careful you don't splodge onto the sky, though. Can you see that? Maybe a little bit more here. As well. And then we we'll come back. And then you're going to take a rigger brush here, which is a long brush. As I said before, it's called a rigger brush. I never use it for rigger, but it's very good for um, branches. And so we've got some branches coming here. And I'm going to come back and do that later. So we've put in the trunks also, nearly forgot. Just going to have a very plain foreground. And take some tissue as well here. And if you want to, you could add some dry brush just on the edge. Bring that down a bit more. I'm going to make that quite dark. Don't make it tree trunks thin at the bottom. And while it's damp, you can actually just drop some dark in like that. We're really waiting for that to dry. Gonna take a rigger brush and we talked about this before, it's a very long brush called a rigger brush, which I don't usually use for rigger, as I have said, but very good for branches. And it doesn't matter if you don't have a um you have a don't have a very steady hand because with trees you don't need that. What I would do is start at the top to get your sort of to, uh, or in fact to try on a piece of rough paper and so I'm going to start on this and so you want pressure heavy pressure light pressure going off so and then flick off do you see that and don't worry if you've got it's broken because You don't really need that there. What you're doing is you're pointing these branches down to the focal point here as well. Do your Like that. I wouldn't do too many of them. Less is more. If you want to add a few more thicker branches, you actually can. And then I would take a synthetic brush 
So you can either got this brush here or that brush, which is a synthetic brush, it's a man-made brush. And then the reason why, and they're usually the cheaper brushes, more student brushes that you have when you don't, they don't hold a lot of water. They don't hold as much as the Sable, Kalinsky or the, that's why they're very expensive. Uh, but they're really, really good. Don't throw them out, keep them because they're really, really good for dry brush and actually any sort of lots of other painting. It's really about knowing your materials. So you're going to do dry brush. So you can either use, you could still use this brush or you can use this brush. Use the side of the brush and so you're tapping at the end. And what you want is to create different areas. So there's sort of darker area here. Can you see? And little bits. here as well. Don't forget to take off that. It's a lot denser up here, isn't it? Sorry if I'm making the, the tapping as making the video jiggle. And so you've got a nice diagonal going up here. And so you want more foliage. You don't want to evenly place. You want more foliage in certain areas. You can make it a little wetter in like that. And I know when to stop as well, she says to herself. Okay, so you're creating a nice sort of, uh, what you want to do is create a nice framework for this as well. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna move these people from here to here. And the reason why that is, is because you've got a nice diagonal going across here. You want them looking out rather than being squidged over in the corner. And my advice is, you just literally need a little square and a little blob. Never ever paint the head first. I cannot uh, accentuate that enough because I cannot tell you the amount of people that put the heads first, they make them too big and then they make them look like aliens. And you do not want aliens landing in your picture. Um, so, what I'm going to do is here, just put the little bodies, just a little, little head. And also have them overlap because they're a couple. If you ever have a group of people, um, have them, don't have them equally set apart, have some overlapping and some not. And they're looking over to the mumbles. I'm just going to darken this a little bit so that they've got something to look at. It's going to be a bit. But you can do, you can sort of go into this if you want and what you can do is then dampen it so you're cleaning the brush and just soften okay and it just gives a little bit more focus and I think that's just about it and I will have a look at relook at that and uh, let you finish up to that stage
So this is the last, this is actually uh, practically finished. So what I would say is that what we have gone through is that you have drawn out looking at the negative play, uh, spaces with the horizon two thirds down. We have done, put on a very, very light wash all over and then let that completely dry and without fiddling so if you put a few streaks in and you see it's going to just let it dry but make sure it's a light wash but know that it's actually going to dry 50 percent lighter so it's very sort of a very cool light dove gray and then when that's dry then what we did was we put in the mumbles headland in a medium tone you put a little bit of wax across here and also dry brush stroke and but remembering not to go over the trunks because otherwise you'll get um sort of that will stop it getting uh, going dark and then you use your strongest tones to put into the trunks and making it darker on the outside and a little bit lighter in between dry brush on the trees and then put two little people down here and now i am just gonna show you now you're not supposed to fiddle but as this is an experimental piece so um, you can either leave it like this or if you want uh, for example there are three trees here this one is in the foreground and so I would like it just to be a little bit darker so I'm just going to put a darker shadow on the right but you don't want that stripe do you so what you're going to then do is you're going to clean that brush completely so it's damp and then you're just going to overlap it and go up the side as well. You can bring that down here if you want. And then again, if you want to, you can still use your tissue to add some texture, okay? But can you see, is that going to make it darker? That one's going off a little bit into the distance. That's a little faded. That's darker. So what I'm trying to get you to do is to get, see the different tones in a painting. And you can create a lovely painting just with one... Uh, with one color you can try this in paint gray as I have you can try it in browns or blues I wouldn't try it in yellows or reds I mean you certainly try it but um, more into darker darker tones darker colors have a more of a, of a range they're easier to get those sort of tones with so I hope you enjoy that and have fun trying out the pictures any questions please just ask